So many people live every day struggling with their mental health and they don't talk about it. There's a real battle, I think, to make get parity between physical health and mental health and the way that it's being treated. I think when employing people, you have a duty and responsibility to look after them, and that includes mental health. I mean, the, the biggest tragedy is when you see that someone's taking their own life and everyone says, we had no idea. That's a direct result of people not being able to talk about it. Day to day is all about normalising conversation about mental health in the workplace. And to do this, we need to work from the top downwards. It's about removing that stigma and talking as normally as possible about mental health. It used to be if somebody's got a bad back, um, then people would have a bit of distrust around it because you can't see a bad back. Somebody burns a finger would probably have more sympathy than somebody's got a bad back. And I think that's the same still, unfortunately, for mental health. That um, you look okay, um, you were happy yesterday, what's the problem today? I think it's really hard to talk in general terms because I meet some people I think are coping exceptionally well, very open, and then they confide in you that every day's a challenge. I think too many times people will end up sometimes going sick or sometimes moving away from that, the business, because they feel unsupported, but they never actually asked. They never actually had the discussion because they didn't feel it was appropriate. They would be seen as an issue. We embrace every problem that any member of staff or any player has is shared amongst us all. Um, and I think, you know, uh, I'm not sort of too um, au fait with, you know, the, the various cliches, uh, but, you know, a problem shared is a problem halved. I think it's important for people to, to feel free to discuss their mental health because the first step to actually getting help, the first step to actually being healthy is actually being honest with yourself. I think it's really important if you're struggling not to leave it too late and to keep battling on and think that you can cope because the signs will be there. Um, you, if you're starting to feel really down, if you're starting to find that things are a bit harder to cope with than you'd normally be able to cope with. and. Don't leave it until it's too late and you can't actually cope. Start to talk to somebody, reach out for help. Because it's so easy to turn in on yourself and actually the, the one thing you probably really don't want to do naturally is to talk to somebody. Um, and that's when you're most, it's, it's most important for you to do so. If you feel like you can't talk to somebody face to face, record yourself on your phone. Just get it all out somehow and play it back to them or, or write it down or just find some way to communicate and then share share your feelings. I think that's a really, really important first step. And, um, but I am very aware that you know, small things lead to bigger things in all walks of life and we need to be very sensitive and understanding how, when we're talking about the workplace, how our neighbour neighbours in that area are feeling and, 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 and trying to pick up on things that are going wrong so that they can be helped early and in a non-condescending way. Because of the particularly when somebody's feeling more vulnerable, their perception is that they will be judged by all of these other standards, that therefore they, they'll be seen as weak and that they can't come forward to seek that help for fear of all that judgment. So what that does is actually makes that worse for them. It ex potentially escalates them into poorer mental health because of the stigma that they've then self-stigmatized to the extent that they just don't seek that help that they need. So regardless of what the situation is, um, the easier people find to talk about it or the, the quicker people can talk about it, then the quicker they can get measures put in place to try and support them. Any advice I could give to anyone would be to stop. Stop for a second, stop for two minutes, stop for ten minutes, take a step back. You know, call it mindfulness, whatever it is. Be aware of your situation. Be aware of where you are, what you're doing and why you're doing it. It was after I kind of relapsed in, I had an eating disorder, so I relapsed kind of in a different way. Uh, and then I kind of realised, you know, obviously I've had support and that's great. So I kind of looked back on that and then it just kind of clicked. And I was like, Romy, like do something about it. Like just, just help yourself. If you're in a, in a workplace where the, the task that you've got to do is not good for your mental health, then maybe that's the decision you've got to make that 
maybe that, that line of work is not for you, find something that is for you. Because at the end of the day, you only have one, one mental health and, it's, and you've got to look after it. A huge part of it is who you're surrounded by and the culture that they kind of manifest. So if you're all on the same page, if you're all open about how you're feeling and what things you like to do to make you feel your best possible self, then that does prepare you for the workplace and it makes you do the best work you can because if you're not feeling great, you don't want, you're not motivated to do good work. So it's good for the employees and the employer to have everyone kind of at their best. And work in mental health, listening is one of the big part of it, listening. I've always made sure that my door's always open and made it easy for people to talk to me um, and ask that question, you know, how are you? And therefore I've never been afraid to say, no, really, what's, what, what, what's the matter? What's the problem? Are you, are you okay? Are you really okay? Do you need some time? You don't have to talk to me. You know, I've tried to leave, leave it as flexible as possible, but be that ear for them to, to talk to if they need to. The turning point for me was when we had um, well, a member of our staff had uh, some problems and some issues and we tried to get them some help and we found it very, very difficult. And I think that's when we all realised things need to be done. It's a culture of being open and being able to talk to each other and it's, you're just as welcome here to burst into tears as you are to fits of giggles because we recognise that everybody's emotions are important and that we can support each other as well as a business. We just want awareness, we want staff to be able to talk freely about mental health, um, the good and the bad side of it. And just the process of talking it helps. That it's. It's quite that simple. We're only doing our little bit, but our little bit, if you like, hopefully will, will, will save lives and change lives. If you break your arm, you go to hospital, uh, to A&E. If you break your mind, you should be able to go and ask for help. Day to day, that's really going to change people. It's going to make a difference. Mm -hmm.